Welcome back to class. Today we will talk about data collection method and time delay method. Before listening to this lecture, please read Collins chapters 2 and 4 and complete reading guide 4 if you haven't done. And uh, after this lecture, you have to complete IRIS module on RTI reading instruction and upload your response to Blackboard. I will talk about how to access uh, IRIS module and complete this assignment later in this lecture. Today, we are going to talk about data collection system and time delay method. Before collecting data, you want to determine what kind of data collection method you want to use so you can measure students' progress in um, the objective you set for uh, the student, right? The easiest way you can do is you can look at the objective you set for your student. Um, your objective includes uh, the criteria, which is which is number, right? So it will tell you how you can collect data. For example, if my uh, objective is, um, for example, Chase will verbally state the, re the items requested with 100% accuracy, then my criteria already tell you the data collection system, which is percentage, right? Uh, another example is if my uh, objective is Chase will verbally request the item at least five times during 30 minute like reading time, uh, for example. Then uh, uh, my criteria, criteria already said five times so I can collect my data using uh, frequency. So uh, you can look at your objective again and you have to find the data collection method that is matched with your objective. You can also consider if your objective is discrete or chained behavior. If your objective is focusing on teaching uh, discrete behavior like this, uh, including only one, clear discrete behavior, then you can just look at your objective and follow the data collection method uh, in your objective, which is percentage in this case. If your behavior, your target behavior objective is chained behavior like this, um, then you have to uh, have task analysis, so you have to specify the steps or tasks, uh, tasks uh, in order. So for example, if your target behavior is chain behavior like this, uh, then the task analysis uh, include the following step, one, two, three, four, five, six, then Then you can create a table like this and you can move uh, the task analysis, the step of behavior into the very left sides. And each day you will collect data on each step of behavior. So September 4, if your student can complete step one through six, then you will mark uh, plus or minus. Um, so plus means um, correct response, minus means uh, incorrect response and zero uh, indicates no response. So you will mark that down and also you can calculate a uh, percentage. These are some uh, possible ways to collect data. Event recording include frequency, rate, percentage, latency, duration, interval recording, and time sampling. And um, I uploaded some um, Sample data collection sheets you can use. If you need downloaded, uh, you can modify them if you need. Um, however, there are infinite ways to collect data so you can be creative. Let's take a look at each data collection method. The first one is frequency. Uh, frequency is easy. Uh, you can just count how many times the behavior occurs within a specified time. So uh, you set the uh, observation time, like for example, 10 minutes, 
and you will use it uh, the same amount of uh, observation time across um, sessions so if you observe the behavior 10 minute today tomorrow should be 10 minute too and the next day should be 10 minutes so the observation time should be uh, consistent across um, the sessions and then you will simply count how many times the behavior occur within the 10 minute observation period uh, you have to remember if you want to use frequency behavior should be uniform in length so you can count it shouldn't occur for long periods so hand waving tantrum those behaviors uh, happen for a long time right so these are not a good example behavior for frequency so this is a sample data sheet you can use uh, we will practice uh, briefly next week in class when we meet again So this sheet is used when your target behavior is chained behavior. You need to uh, write down the steps first, then put the date on the top. Then you can circle uh, the steps if the child could complete those steps independently. And you can cross out some steps if the student needs uh, any help on the steps or a uh, student cannot perform the steps in independently. Then finally, you can count the total number of uh, circled step and you can get the percentage um, out of the total number of steps you have. Rate is a frequency of a behavior and its relationship to time. So you can use rate when the observation time of a, a session varies. So for example, uh, you want to use frequency, but uh, to use frequency, you have to have the same observation time across sessions. But if your observation time uh, of uh, for each session, when your observation time um, varies across sessions, for example, today uh, you, you can only observe for 30 minutes, 30 minutes tomorrow uh, you can have 10 minutes then um, you can use rate you can still count the behavior but you will divide the number of behavior occurred by time so when you report the data uh, it can go like uh, three times per minute or five times in 10 minutes so you can still report uh, your data in this way this is a sample data sheets you can use uh, duration is easy. So the length of time a behavior occur within specified time. So like for example, on task behavior, if that is your target behavior, then you want to see how long the child can sit and, uh, and sit and uh, being on task. So you can say two minutes, four minutes, uh, six minutes was uh, that was a data for her uh, while she was on sit something like that so that's duration duration is easy so this is a form uh, you can use for duration data recording latency uh, this is also easy when a student uh, is very reluctant to do something uh, then you will cl uh, collect data on latency so you will collect the length of time between a the presentation of ST the um, stimulus and the initiation of the behavior so when you, when teacher say something like um, everyone takes out a pencil when teacher say that uh, direction you want to see how long it takes for the student to start taking out his pencil so it can be five seconds six seconds um, two minutes it's up to the student though here's the uh, simple recording sheets everything will be online so you can download if you want to use interval recording sheets um, there are two types of uh, interval recording partial and whole interval so if you want to use interval recording uh, you will set the observation time let's say um, 
10 minute across sessions and then you will divide the 10 minute into equal and small uh, interval like 10 second 20 second um, or 30 second let uh, this this uh, chart in this chart uh, the minute was divided into 10 second interval so each minute we have six interval because we are using 10 second interval makes sense right there are only five observation five minute observation time so we have one two three four five six uh, multiple by five so there are 30 intervals boxes right so if you are using a uh, whole interval you will see that if uh, the target behavior uh, occurs from very beginning of the interval to the end of interval continuously without stopping point if you are using um, partial interval if the behavior occur at, at at any moment within the interval you will mark and you will say that's the uh, occurrence So here's an example, uh, T means uh, talks out, so that's the um, target behavior. Uh, let's say this person is using uh, partial interval, so the teacher marked uh, T if uh, this person's student, Diego, talked out at any moment within that uh, interval, so she marked T in the first interval, third and fourth. So you will see how many occurrence you see across uh, intervals. So you see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, nine, eight, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eleven occurrence over thirty intervals total. So the occurrence, uh, the percentage of occurrence of this talking out behavior was fifty-seven percent. So you will mark like that. Uh, time sampling form uh, so time sampling is very similar to interval recording but you are going to use larger interval like two minutes three minutes and then you will set the timer for two minutes or three minutes whatever uh, number you set um, and you will set the timer whenever timer goes off like every two minutes or three minutes uh, you will look up and see if the child is engaging in, uh, engaging in the behavior, the target behavior at that moment. If you see the target behavior, whatever behavior you're focusing, if you see the behavior at that moment, you will mark in the interval as occurrence. Here's the summary. Uh, you can take a look at this. You can use this one as reference when you choose the methods uh, when you choose data collection methods for your project. Okay, uh, for your project, we will collect data. So when you collect data, you will collect uh, two different type of uh, data. So baseline uh, is just baseline. Uh, before you implement the intervention, you want to figure out how the child's um, behaves in terms of your objective. So you will observe the behavior, target behavior, without intervention or prompt anything. You will just naturally observe the target behavior um, more than three times. So you want to see how the, uh, how, uh, the child is perf performing in terms of the target behavior. You must have at least three data points, three baseline data points, and it's good to have stable baseline so uh, you can you can when you introduce your intervention you can compare the effects of uh, intervention uh, with this stable baseline intervention you will choose a intervention strategy to promote uh, whatever behavior you're focusing uh, it's uh, by introducing the intervention you can see the behavior change you can compare the behavior change with uh, the baseline so um, before you introduce 
the intervention, um, the focus behavior like uh, social interaction was really low. But when you introduce the intervention, um, if the behavior increased, then you can compare your uh, the effectiveness of behavior, I mean intervention, uh, with baseline data. I have to talk about uh, research research design. Uh, we are going to use A B design. Um, a is baseline. B is intervention. So because we want to compare the data between baseline before you introduce intervention and after you introduce intervention. So A phase is always called baseline. I mean, baseline is always called A and intervention phase is called B. That's why we said this is AB design. It's also known as teacher design. So um, you will have uh, more than three baseline, but in this graph, um, this teacher has one, two, three, four, five baseline you see, right? And then the target behavior was number of correct responses on reading assignments. So before you introduce intervention, she has three, uh, five baseline sessions. She just observe without help or without intervention. And the correct response uh, was really low. When she introduced intervention, I don't know, she didn't specify the intervention what intervention she used, but uh, when she introduced intervention, uh, the correct response, the frequency of correct response increased with the intervention. And she had one, two, three, four, five different sessions uh, using the intervention. So we can tell the intervention was effective. Later for your gra I mean, project, you will graph uh, your data like this. When you interpret your graph, you should, you should consider these three terms, level, trend, variability. So you will see, it, uh, you will compare the level, the mean of data within a condition. So mean of the data within baseline will be compared with the mean of data within uh, the intervention phase. Easy, right? Trends, uh, that's a slope or patterns uh, of change over time. So uh, you can tell the trend was flat, positive, negative. Uh, variability, uh, it's how much the data is fluctuating. We want to see the uh, stable data uh, within each condition. So, so when, only when you introduce the intervention, the behavior increase or challenging behavior decrease. That's good, but if you see too high variability within a phase, uh, then um, something is going on, right? So we want to see stable variability, uh, low variability, and we want to see the uh, positive uh, trends or negative tre uh, trends based on the uh, description of objective. Uh, and we want to see the mean change across conditions, right? So you, when you interpret your result on the graph, you should consider these three terms. Here's the example graphs. Uh, let's just take a look at the first graph. So uh, let's say this teacher wants to uh, improve the, a child's social interaction skills then uh, the baseline, uh, the mean was really low and trends flat. And uh, variability, you see, as you see, there, uh, there is low variability, very uh, flat. And oh, next phase, that's intervention. The mean increase with intervention, right? And then the trend is flat. Um, and then variability is also low. So we can tell the intervention was effective, intervention controlled the behavior, intervention affected the behavior change, right? We can definitely tell that. So we are going to use these three terms, uh, level, trend, variability, to interpret the graph. Last week, we talked about um, 
prompting systems and we covered uh, least to most, most least. Uh, today we'll talk about time delay system. So time delay methods include um, simultaneous prompt system, simultaneous time delay, constant time, constant time delay, and progressive time delay. These three time delay methods uh, look similar but uh, has slight difference. We want our student to learn without error. So uh, by providing this prompting or prompting procedure, systematic prompting procedure, we want to uh, help um, our students and we want to decrease opportunity for errors and we want to increase access to reinforcement. To use time uh, delay procedures, you must consider several things. First, uh, you, you need to see if the child can wait to your uh, prompt. And you have to know what type of prompts uh, will work best for the learner. It's called controlling prompts. The controlling prompts for A students um, is uh, means the prompts that must work for the student to understand the task. So the control, when you provide controlling prompts, the, mu the student must able to complete the task or direction you provide. That's called control controlling prompts. And controlling prompts uh, varies across people because uh, I may understand uh, your verbal prompts, but uh, a student may not understand uh, your verbal prompts uh, if students has hearing uh, impairments, right? So controlling prompts uh, is different across people. So you have to figure out what is the controlling prompts for your specific student. Time delay can be used uh, for discrete behavior and change behavior. So you can use uh, all behave basically you can use time delay for all behaviors let's talk about constant time delay um, once you set the goal then you will pick one type of prompts uh, that must be controlling prompts that works for your students you will provide the controlling prompts uh, right after SD is given that's called zero second delay your controlling prompt is given at the same time as request. After, after you say something, then you provide the controlling prompt um, for five trial or 10 trial, the number you can set. After the five trial, then you don't provide the controlling prompt at a zero second delay. Instead, you will provide uh, your controlling prompt at five seconds or four seconds after your request is given. And then you will provide a four second time delay uh, for five trial or ten uh, trial. Uh, here's a procedure. Uh, after you deliver task direction, you will provide a controlling prompt right away. And then if student make correct response after you, then you will praise the student. If student make incorrect response, um, and then you will err, uh, correct error and uh, prompts will be repeated. So here's the example. Cal, are you ready to learn some words? Yes. What word? Blue. Blue. What word? Yellow. Yellow. Great job, buddy. No, yellow. What word? Green. <laughs> That's way for me to say it. <laughs> you know green. I'm proud of you, buddy. Plus, I know all the colors. You do. All right. Okay. What word? Red. Red. You know red. What word? Yellow. Yellow. You know yellow. So this is zero second word, blue. Blue. So you will do this Wait, type two, of blue. zero second. There are, you're right. Five sessions, there are, there ten sessions. Right. Right. The same so way student for me to can say. learn the okay. things you want to teach. What with word? Second, yellow. Uh, zero second. You know yellow! 
delay. What word? Red. Red. You know red. What word? Green. <laughs> Sweet me. You're right though. Good job. What word? Green. Green. You know green. What word? Red. Red. You know red. What word? Blue. blue. I said the same. You time. did. You know blue. Good job, buddy. You did awesome. Uh, you can collect data uh, in time delay. You can uh, collect data on correct uh, responses unprompted, incorrect responses unprompted, correct responses prompted, incorrect uh, responses prompted, and no response NR. We'll talk about data collection next week in practice. So after you deliver uh, 5 to 10 uh, zero second delay and you are going to use uh, constant time delay sessions so you can wait 3 seconds or 4 seconds whatever second uh, that is socially appropriate uh, you can set uh, it's the same but you will wait for 30, uh, 3 seconds before you provide prompt uh, so you deliver task direction and wait for 3 seconds and if student make correct responses you will praise if students uh, has no responses or incorrect responses uh, then you can provide prompt again or you can correct error I'll say them quick okay Cal are you ready to learn some words yes all right remember if you don't know the word wait and I'll tell you okay okay, okay. What word? Blue. You know blue! What word? Yellow. You know yellow! What word? Green. You know green! What word? Red. You know red! Okay, so this is a delayed section. Uh, what word? Yellow. Sessions. Great and job, you know yellow. After she gives directions, she does not provide controlling prompts immediately. What and word? Uh, she waits <gasps> you know for blue. the child's nice response. Nice job, buddy. Uh, this child was really good to respond. What uh, word? Yellow. So no, the teacher yellow. did not, uh, didn't have to correct the arrow or uh, what word? didn't Red. have to wait for three Great seconds job, or bud. four seconds. You did. But uh, if the students uh, needed uh, for error corrections or prompts she will wait for three seconds and she will provide uh, appropriate responses like prompts well if you want to use ctd's constant time delay uh, methods for your final project to teach math skill or uh, math skill, literacy skill, you can use it. You can use in a small group or you can use in one-on-one -on -one sessions. Uh, you can consider to use this because this is evidence-based intervention strategy. It's good. Uh, there are several detailed things you must consider, but I will talk about those things next week in class. Progress time delay is a little different. Uh, it's identical to constant time delay, except the delay interval is gradually increased from 8, uh, 0 to whatever seconds, uh, 5 seconds, 6, 7, 8. So both uh, time delay methods start uh, their trial from 0 second delay, but uh, progress time delay increased interval from uh, zero seconds uh, time delay they have five se se uh, sessions at zero second delay and the next session uh, they increase one second so in summary uh, the teacher has five zero second delay five uh, one second delay five sec uh, two second delay so the teacher will um, incre gradually increase the delay time Makes sense, right? Versus uh, constant time delay. If you use constant time delay, you use five uh, zero second delay, and then you jump to like three second time delay. 
and deliver five uh, three-second time delay sessions, something like that. Stimulus prompting, it's, um, it's basically it's zero second uh, delay. So you will never leave, uh, never, never leave uh, the zero second delay. So you can provide like uh, five uh, zero second delay teaching and you probe and see if the child learn with zero second delay so you don't provide any prompts and see if the child can perform the behavior without uh, the controlling prompt if student cannot perform the behavior without, uh, without the controlling prompts then you will you are going back to uh, zero second time delay it provides five more sessions with zero second uh, time delay and going back to probe going back to so uh, going back to zero second time delay, so something like that. Five zero second uh, delay, five, uh, five zero second delay and prop, five uh, zero second delay and prop, something like that. It's easy. Let me talk about uh, IRIS module uh, because this will be the assignment for today. Uh, IRIS Center uh, provides useful information and educational tools based on CC, NCATE, and DEC standards. So it's good resources you can use as special educator and a teacher in a blended classroom. Uh, we talk, We briefly talked about RTI in our class. Um, they provide really good information about reading instruction you can use in uh, your blended in, uh, classroom. So if you go to, uh, if you click the link, you will see this type of page. I circle uh, the part uh, you need to complete in yellow, right? So you will study from challenge challenges to the uh, as assessment so you will click each of these uh, sections and you will study and at the end of this module you will see the assessment if you click the assessment you will see this uh, screen right so uh, the assessment page give you several questions i circle in yellow uh, there are some more in the below um, you will after you study this module you will answer to these several questions um, and you will save your response in a document fi file and you will upload your answer to blackboard that's the assignment for today okay for next week please read collins chapter three and wesling and fox chapter uh, is on blackboard so please read it mm. And please complete your reading guide five by 4.50 p.m. next week. Uh, also, you have to complete your IRIS module on RTI reading by next week. Okay, if you have any question, please email me at sunnykim at uic.edu. And have a great week. Bye-bye.